So, anyway, the, the first session this morning, uh, it, it's labelled the competitiveness of the Irish dairy sector, but it, it actually, uh, it, it, um, Piet Bohr yesterday said, you know, there's a lot of comparisons about milk price and there's some comparisons in costs, but they're rarely brought together. And this, this paper, will say, which is actually an added extra, the, uh, uh, it, it resulted from a conversation with Lawrence, and we were just saying like, that there's a, a lack of information in that area. Lawrence will say that a volunteer to do a paper will say so. Anybody who volunteers, you're sunk. And, uh, the, but he escaped anyway because it's his colleague, Fiona Thorpe is actually giving the paper. And it's a, a, giant, uh, it's a joint effort by Fiona, Trevor Donnellan, uh, Thea Hennessy uh, and Lawrence will say that, uh, and and it's going to have a look at. Will say that uh, first. Will say that uh, how competitive uh, is Ireland, but but also the UK is there within the EU, and then have a broader look in terms of competitiveness uh, on a more global scale. So I, I'm delighted that Fiona is uh, uh, the here to um, try and fill us in, and will say that who's feeling the most pain at the moment. Okay, thanks uh, for that, Michael. So as Michael has said, what I'm going to talk to you about for the next 20 minutes or half an hour or so is competitiveness of the Irish dairy sector at farm level. And as Mike has already said, this is a joint paper with Lawrence, who's going to take all the really difficult questions at the end of this, um, and Trevor Donlan and Tia Hennessy, uh, both in the Agricultural Economics Department in Chagas. So just to give you an overview, I'm going to start off with a background and a rationale for why it's important to look at the profitability and competitiveness of the Irish dairy sector at the moment. I won't dwell too much on the methods and the measurement about how we went about going to, to do this assessment, but I think it is important just to outline the type of, of data that we have been using because this is not an easy exercise. I, am, I need to, to say that from the start. Then in terms of the results, there are two sets of results that I'm going to present to you here this morning. One is based on data from the European Commission's Farm Accountancy Data Network. And then when we want to look outside of the Eurozone, we have to look at a different type of data um, to look at our international competitive position. And then we look at data from the International Farm Comparisons Network for Dairy. And finish up then with a few conclusions and implications from the findings. So the background and rationale and the question that we all have to ask ourselves here this morning is why is it important to assess the competitiveness of any sector, whether it's dairy or anything else? And the first policy documents that I looked at when I started looking um, at this issue was the Food Harvest 2020 document and the Foodwise 2025 documents here for Irish agriculture. And when you flick through those documents, the key thing that jumps out at you for the Irish dairy sector is the assumption that the Irish dairy sector is competitive, having very low cost of production and high profitability internationally. So we need to continually to go back and reassess that situation and make sure in terms of up-to-date data that that is still the situation. When we're looking at any reform, whether it's reform of the common agricultural policy or whether it's reform of trade, um, whether it's bilateral trade agreements or WTO, what all of that, that policy reform means is that the, the Irish dairy sector is always moving towards a, situ a situation where we're competing against international counterparts. So it's not just within the EU that we need to assess ourselves anymore. Ever increasingly, it's countries like the US, Australia and New Zealand that we need to compare ourselves against. So that's why I spend a good bit of time here this morning looking at price developments and volume changes and cost of production changes in these key international producing regions. And volatility, I suppose I don't have to tell anybody here this morning about the importance of volatility for the Irish dairy sector or internationally. And the Irish dairy sector in particular needs to be able to have the ability to withstand cost price pressure and that is an ever evolving situation for all dairy regions internationally. And 2015, the year that was, okay, so it's especially important for the year 2015 when we all know that we had very dramatic reductions in milk price. So that's what I want to do here this morning is set the scene in terms of what happened to cost of production volume changes and profitability for the year 2015. And before I move on from this background section, I just want to finish up with one final comment 
And I always say this when I'm talking about the competitiveness of any sector in Irish agriculture. And that's competitiveness is about survival. It's about survival in the marketplace, and it's not always about being the best in the world. And you need to keep that in your mind as you're moving through the results in this presentation. We all know that historically New Zealand and the Australias of this world have had very low costs of production. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a place for other competitors out there. So moving on to the methods and how we go about looking at the competitiveness of the Irish dairy sector. Well, there are two key indicators that I always use for when I'm measuring the competitiveness of the dairy sector. And they relate to costs of production and profitability. So often when you're looking at competitiveness of a sector, what, will, what analysts will often do is just look at costs of production. But I make the point here that it's important not just to look at cost of production, but also to look at output volume and output value, and putting those two components together, cost of production and what's happening on the output side, to come up with a true indication of resilience and competitiveness of the dairy sector. So the two units or two indicators um, of competitiveness that I'm using here in this presentation are costs per unit of product, usually per kg of milk solids, and then costs relative to output value. And then a little bit on how we measured it. We have two elements of costs. The first are the normal type costs that you'll all be familiar with, which are cash costs of production. So the normal cost of production that you'll see in a P&L account, excluding depreciation. But I also have a little bit on what I call total economic costs. And I, I wanted to spend a little bit of time on these total economic costs here today because they are very important in an expansion scenario. Now that we don't have quota binding anymore and we're looking at possibly bringing in more land, labour and capital into to the system, we need to see how Irish dairy farms are competing on these total economic costs. And the data, I've already said this, the data that we're looking at is from the European Commission, so it's based on stratified, or stratified random sample across all European member states. And the Chagas National Farm Survey is the provider of the data for, for Irish dairy farms here. But then outside of the EU, we need to look at a different type of data, and that they're based on representative type farms uh, from the International Farm Comparisons Network. And just before I move off the methods, the final comment I want to make here is that, I've said this already, this is not an easy and straightforward exercise to get an up-to-date position in terms of cost of production, profitability and competitiveness of this sector, because the data is often time-lagged. And what we have done here is look at the latest available data that we have um, available to us and match that up with expert opinion um, from key international dairy producing regions to get an up-to-date picture for 2015 in terms of competitiveness. Okay, what you're really here to see, the results. So what we're doing here in this first set of results is using the data from the European Commission to look at costs and returns, um, profitability and competitiveness for the years 2011 up as far as 2015. So the latest available harmonised data from official sources that we have available to us is for the year 2011. And what we're looking at here in this graphic on the left hand side of the, the screen is net cash margin per, in, in euro terms per tonne of milk produced. And we're comparing Ireland here against key dairy producing regions in con the continental um, EU. So we're comparing <laughs> Ireland against Denmark, Germany, France and the Netherlands and again, net cash margin in terms of euro, euro uh, per tonne of milk produced. So while these statistics are somewhat time lagged, they're four years old now at this stage, it is still reassuring to see that the latest available official statistics shows and paints a very positive picture for the average Irish dairy farm with the highest net cash margin per tonne of milk produced in 2011. But I suppose the question that I and I suppose everybody here in the audience is asking themselves is that how did Irish dairy farms perform in the years since 2011 and especially in, in 2015? So that previous slide was just a scene setting exercise and what we really want to look at are key indicators of competitiveness for the most recent time period. We want to look at costs per kg of milk solids and costs as a percent of output as I've already said.
And when we're looking at the latest situation, what we need to look at is a mix of official data source and expert opinion in individual member states. So here in the centre of this graphic, this is what we're trying to get at. This is what we want to measure, which is cost per unit of volume or cost as a percentage of output. And to get to that, we need to look at how costs of production have evolved in 2015, what's happened in volume across the European member states, and what's happened to milk price. Was Ireland um, an outlier in respect of, of, of any of these components? And they're the questions that we'll, we'll look at at this stage. So remember the three components that, that feed into um, any measure of competitiveness highlighted at the top of the slide here, milk price, cost of production and volume changes. So what we're looking at here is the first component, milk price, and I suppose there's nothing really new on this slide here to anybody here in the audience today. It's the evolution of milk prices from the start of 2014 up until the latest statistics we have towards the end of 2015. And a dramatic downward traje trajectory for each of the key EU dairy producing regions there. So the, it was a similar story across the key regions in the EU. Denmark milk price down by about 24% from 2015 relative to 14. France down 16%, Germany 24%, Ireland at 22% and the Netherlands at 25 So the only country there, a slight outlier, um, is France. And the, the rationale for why that's slightly different is just to do with the, the makeup of where the milk goes and, and processing um, in France. So the second component, cost of production. And what we're looking at here is a composite index from, from Eurostat for a basket of goods. So what has happened to cost of production on the average dairy farm in each of the, the key EU countries we're looking at here. So it's not a very dramatic story here when we're just looking at an index of cost of production. This index shows a very similar story for the key dairy producing regions with cost of production down by just around 2% in 2015. But the point that I want to make, to make here is that it's not sufficient just to look at this index of cost of production on its own right. You also need to look at volume changes. And this is what we've done here in Ireland. Um, the, the Agricultural Economics Department in Chagas at the back end of 2015 looked at total cost of production on average dairy farms in Ireland and taken volume and prices into account, it's estimated the cost per litre decreased by 9% in 2015. So just the point that I'm making is it's, it's not sufficient just to look at cost of production in their own right, but you need to look at volume changes and how those costs of production are spread over um, an increase in milk volume in 2015, which was the story in Ireland. So just making the point that volume changes are very important. And this graphic here from Eurostat shows Ireland um, steaming ahead there for 2015 relative to 14 in terms of milk volume. So, in terms of the colours that we're looking at, Ireland there in the dark blue showing quite significant volume changes compared to the other European countries that we're looking at. So, just to summarise it, overall EU production for the time period that up as far as October um, of 2015, which is the official stats that we have at the moment, EU production just up by 1.8%. But if we look at the key dairy producing regions and how they differ from that, Denmark just up by 2%, France uh, virtually no change, Germany up 1.5%, Ireland in this graphic up 11%, but when you factor in a full calendar year and what has happened to milk solids, it's probably more like 15 or 16% that we're looking at, and Netherlands up by 5%. So Ireland definitely an outlier um, with respect to volume changes in 2015. So I'm just bringing you back to, the, to this graphic here again, bearing in mind the different components that we need to take into account when we're looking at competitiveness. So it's cost of production, volume changes and milk price, and we've gone through those changes now for the main EU dairy producing regions. And we're going to put it together now to come up with an estimate for 2015. And the first indicator I'm presenting here is costs per kg of milk solids. And these are presented just for the average specialist dairy farm in the key EU, EU dairy producing regions. So Ireland here on the left hand side of the graphic compared to France, the Netherlands, Germany and Denmark. 
So our analysis is showing uh, an estimated cost of production expressed per kg of milk solids for 2015. Here in this graphic, and we're seeing Ireland with the lowest cost per kg of milk solids compared to the comparator countries. And the dashed line there is just the average of all the countries that we're looking at. So average cash costs for these five countries, main um, dairy producing regions, an average of 3.7 per kg of milk solids where Ireland compares very favourably at just 2.9 euro per kg of milk solids in 2015. So Ireland well below the average in terms of kg of milk solids. So I'd summarise this by saying that this is a very positive story in terms of the short to the medium term outlook for the Irish dairy farms. But you'll remember back to the beginning of the presentation that I said it wasn't just um, sufficient just to look at costs on a per unit volume basis, which we did in the previous slide. But we also need to look at volume of that milk produce and more importantly, the milk price and the, the value that the farmers are getting for, for that unit of milk. And this is what we do here. We look at costs as a percentage of output value. And when you're looking at anything in terms of competitiveness, uh, this indicator costs to, as a percentage of output, this ratio is a very important picture of the resilience of any sector going forward. So we're looking at costs as a percentage of output across the different countries. And to begin with, we're just looking at cash costs of production here in red. And you'll remember back that these cash costs of production are the normal costs of production that you see in the P&L account, excluding depreciation. And we see Ireland here with the lowest cash cost as a percentage of output compared to the other countries. So the average cash cost for the five countries at 94% as a percentage of, of milk output compared to Ireland at 77%. The blue component at the top of this stacked bar chart is showing the opportunity costs. So it's the opportunity costs of the owned land, labour and capital in the system. Now when myself and Lauren started talking about this paper um, at the back end of last year, we were saying that the first and foremost thing that we wanted to look at was cash costs of production. But the point that I was making, um, trying to make to Lauren, I don't know whether I won out or not in the end, but we also need to look at total economic costs of production. And the reason I say that is that we are in an expansion scenario at the moment. And if we want to think about bringing a, it, it to expanding the average size Irish dairy farm and bringing in more land, labour and capital into the system, we need to look at our total economic costs of production and provide an appropriate return to the owned land, labour and capital that we have. So this is what we're doing here with including these opportunity costs of production. And because we are a grass-based system of production, we tend to have a lot more land and labour within the system. And it's for that reason, when we look at total economic cost of production, our competitive position is not as favourable as that which we see in, in terms of cash costs. So average economic costs as a percentage of output, 134% across these range of countries, and Ireland just marginally below that. So I'm just making the point that in an expansion scenario, this is something that you need to keep at the back of, the, of one's mind, um, what those additional um, land, labour and capital costs are um, as the average size farm grows. So just summarising it, what we're seeing here in terms of costs as a percentage of output value, it's a similar story um, for Ireland in terms of what we saw on the previous slide when we looked at costs per kg of milk solids, and that's it's positive in cash cost terms. But it's not as positive when we look at total economic costs and we have to think that this has some implications uh, for an expansion scenario. So there is future work to be done at looking at the distribution of costs and, uh, and returns in an expansion scenario, but it's not something I'm going to present to you here today. <coughs> just before I move off the, the EU comparison, there's just one final slide that I wanted to put up here. And it's, it's important in the expansion scenario as well because if we're talking about growing the size of our farm, we need to, to think about what debt levels might mean for the average size Irish dairy farm. We're coming from a very low base here. This is the latest available stats that we have from the EU. And we see that Ireland, the average Irish dairy farm, is in a very favourable position before we, we go into um, a no-quota situation. And we have very low debt or liabilities per cow. Italy is the only country that has lower debt levels than ourselves across these range of countries that we're looking at. Over 
to the right hand side we see Denmark which has very high substantial debt levels per cow and that reflects the system of production that Denmark has where the land um, doesn't tend to just transfer from one generation to the other but it's, it's sold from, from, from one generation to the other. So just bearing it in mind that um, even though we have low debt levels at the moment, we need to think about what, what increase in that debt level might mean for our total economic costs. Okay, moving outside of the EU, because at the start of the presentation I was saying that looking um, just within the Eurozone wasn't um, the full picture, and as we're ever evolving, moving towards world prices internationally, we need to look at the competitive position of the average Irish dairy farm um, outside of the Eurozone. And we're looking at data here for 2014 and 2015. So we don't have the luxury of a harmonised data set once we move outside of the Eurozone. And what we look at here is data from the International Farm Comparisons Network. And this data is based on typical type farms which are constructed in the individual countries. And here are the countries that we're going to compare ourselves against, the UK, the US, New Zealand and Australia, looking at a range of different um, systems of production, ranging from feedlot type systems to grazing type systems here in Ireland and New Zealand, and then freestyle and stanchion um, barns in the UK and uh, some of the US. So this is the latest official statistics that we have from the International Farm Comparisons Network in terms of cost of production. What we're looking at here is a graphic of cost of production on average size farms for the year 2014. And we, I know the legend might be a bit difficult to read there, but what we're looking at is a range of cost of production uh, with the, the heavier colours representing a higher cost of production per um, standardised unit of milk. Okay, but the reassuring story, I suppose, from this graphic is that we see ourselves there in Ireland with similar costs of production to that experienced in New Zealand for the year 2014. But that, was just a pre that, that slide was just a scene-setting exercise, and really what we're concerned about, I suppose, is what happened to cost of production and milk price and the effect of that on profitability for 2015. Okay, so we need to look at what happened to cost of production, milk price, volume changes and also exchange rates when we move outside of the Eurozone. So milk prices. What we're looking at here is milk prices in the US, New Zealand and comparing it against the base in the EU. And there's just one point that I want to draw your attention to here in this, in this graphic and it's that which is circled on the right hand side of the graphic. We all know that there was a dramatic downturn in milk prices in 2014 and 2015. But what I have circled here is the situation in the, U in the US, where international milk prices tended to be trending downwards in 2014. That hard hit really didn't hit home in the US until the start of 2015. So their milk price reduction in 2015 tended to be somewhat higher than some of the other countries that we're going to look at here. So that's official statistics that we have um, and it's not um, as up to date as, as we would like and it's not standardised for production versus calendar year. So what we have done is that we have consulted with experts um, in individual um, international producing regions to come up with a commentary in terms of milk prices for these international dairy producing regions. So Australia, based on a calendar annual year basis, the best estimate that we have is that milk price reduced by 8% in 2015, compared to a New Zealand commentary where they're looking at a 25% reduction in milk price for the production year in own currency terms. The US down 30%, the UK down 22%, and Ireland down 22%. These are all in own currency terms, and we'll talk about exchange rates and their effects now in a few moments. So the next component that we need to take into account and look at is volume changes. Now I know this is a busy slide but I'll try and, and, and talk you through what's happening here. We're looking at volume changes for Australia, New Zealand and the, U and the US. And these are official statistics, um, not always as up to date as, as we would like. So if we start with the Australian milk production on the left hand side, an official statistic showing that volume changes up about 2% in 2015. But when we consult with experts in Australia, they're saying that the effect of the El Nino at the end of 2015 means that on a calendar year basis, it's, the total production volume would probably be more or less static. 
New Zealand official statistics showing production down, which is a big news story for New Zealand, where we've seen um, annual increases for as long as we can remember. So official statistics showing production down by 3.4%, but commentary from New Zealand saying that um, for a production year, for a full production year in New Zealand, it'll probably be down between 5 and 8% for New Zealand. And the US on the right-hand side, official stats showing about a 1% um, increase in production volume in the US. So it's US production um, appears to be holding up well despite um, the price developments that I explained on the previous slide. And we better not forget about the UK here, um, back to, to the EU again. Um, and quote is going um, in March last year. Even though the quotas were eliminated, we know that the UK hadn't been filling their quota for a while. So we don't see any significant change in production in, in the UK for 2015, up at best 1% based on this information. So the last component that we want to look at, what happened to cost of production in 2015? And we have this colour coded here on the left hand side in green, showing the regions internationally that experienced declines in cost of production. So on, um, when we're expressing costs um, on a cent per litre basis uh, for Ireland, we're looking at cost reductions of about 9%. Now, we could increase that um, by another couple of percent if we expressed it on costs per kg of milk solids. New Zealand commentary cost down by about 6% per kg of milk solids for 2015. And then regions internationally that didn't experience much change in terms of costs of production. Australia commentary, no change. UK down at best 3%, reflecting what happened on commodity markets. Um, and the US down at best 5% on an annual basis in own currency terms. I just want to flick back to an Ireland-centric uh, picture here for a moment. So I talked about a 9% reduction on a cent per litre basis for the average Irish dairy farm in 2015. And I just want to show a little bit of history here in saying that weather conditions were good, milk production volume was, was very good in 2015, and this all translated into a positive news story in terms of cost of production. So even though milk prices um, experienced a very dramatic fall in 2015, we really did um, escape what could have been a, a very dire situation for the average Irish dairy farm if we had costs of production which were similar to what we had in the last couple of years, say 2012 or 2013 in particular. So the last component that I want to look at is exchange rates. And we, I suppose this is not, no news to anybody here in the audience. In 2015, we saw a significant weakening of the euro against the dollar. And what this means for the average Irish dairy farm is that it boosts the competitiveness of our exports and it inflates the costs of our imported inputs. So it has a, it has a double edged sword there. So we need to take those exchange rates into account when we are looking at our picture of competitiveness internationally. And what we're looking at here is, is cash costs and milk output uh, for 2014. Um, and we'll go on to look at the 2015 position in a minute. But I just want to highlight here the countries that we're looking at, remembering back that in the IFCN, the International Farm Comparisons Network, we're comparing Ireland against Australia, New Zealand, a range of US farms and um, the UK. So that's just what the symbols are there at the bottom. So we're looking at cash costs as a percentage of milk output and remembering back at the beginning of the presentation I was saying that that cash cost to milk output percentage ratio is a really good indication of the resilience of the average Irish dairy farm um, in this comparison. So what I have highlighted here in green is the average Irish dairy farm and the larger size Irish dairy farm which we have representative in this IFCN methodology. So IE121 there is a larger size Irish dairy farm with 121 dairy cows and IE70 is an average size farm with 70 cows. So an average size and a larger size farm. And whilst we see um, representative farms in the US, that US 80, Wisconsin and Australia with 750 dairy cows having lower costs of production than ourselves, we see that the larger Irish dairy farm with 120 dairy cows really coming out well in this competitive analysis. 
So in terms of costs as a percentage of output, the larger Irish dairy farm at 62% and the average Irish dairy farm not much higher at 66%. So I'd summarise this slide by saying that it's a very positive story even outside of the Eurozone for Irish dairy farming. And you need to remember what I said at the beginning of the presentation was that competitiveness is about survival and not always being about, about being the best in the world. So even though we're not the, the, the first in this graphic here, I think we are very well placed. But I suppose what we really want to know is what happened when cost of production moved and when milk price moved in 2015. And this is what we're doing here in this slide. So if we just flick back between 14 and 15 there for a minute, what you can see is that the, the bar charts moved up in all of the countries that we're looking at. So milk price really did hit home in 2015 and did have an effect on this key indicator of competitiveness, which is cost as a percentage of output. But the reassuring story is that even though our cost as a percentage of output did deteriorate in Ireland in 2015, it's still a positive news story because that pain was also experienced in different, in, in different degrees um, in the non-Eurozone countries that we're looking at. So the cash cost output ratios deteriorated in all regions. It wasn't just Ireland that experienced this pain. And Irish farms remain very competitive in the non-Eurozone area for this estimate of 2015. So you'll be glad to know I'm coming to a few conclusions. Um, this is still ongoing research and we have a very new, innovative, new project starting this year which will make this exercise much easier in the future in terms of getting a handle on the most up-to-date indicator of competitive position of the average Irish dairy farm. But what we have done here this morning and what we've seen here this morning is that the average Irish dairy farm still remains very competitive on a cash cost basis. Ireland had one of the lowest costs per unit of production in the key um, EU and non-EU countries that we were looking at. And this has to be seen as a positive in the short to the medium term outlook for the Irish dairy sector. Now there is some sting in detail, there was some deterioration when total economic costs were calculated and this has to have implications for expansion. We need to keep that at the back of our mind, the costs of, of bringing in additional land, labour and capital into the system. But still in saying that, I'm going to finish up by saying that resilience of the Irish dairy production system was illustrated in 2015 despite large milk price reductions. And just the final key take-home messages from the, the presentation. So in 2015, the year that was, we had favourable weather conditions which translated into a reduction in cost of production for the average Irish dairy farm. We had very good yields and very good milk solids and we had favourable exchange rate movements. Total economic costs in the expansion scenario must be watched if we're looking for some caveats from the presentation. But this is nothing new here for a grass-based grass system of production. We all know that these opportunity costs of production um, tend to be high. And finally, Ireland is still the lowest cash cost producer in the EU amongst the key producers of dairy within the EU. And resilience has been de demonstrated internationally in 2015 for the average Irish dairy farm. So that's it, Mike. Thanks very much, Fiona. All right. I